What's up everybody? How you doing? Uh, Saturday. My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com. So, I just got done working and building some stuff. I was going to work on the uh, popper control panel a little bit here and I uh, decided I really wasn't ready for that because I have to do some relay interfacing between what I'm doing and to make everything else work. So, I decided I was going to work on the capacitor bank a little bit more. So this is a capacitor bank update. I think this is number three doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, so this is what I've got to show you. Really quickly, I've been live today. Uh, it is the, uh, well, I don't know, it's Saturday, the 7th or 8th, something like that. And I've been live, and what's been pretty fun, actually, is that uh, Zero Fossil Fuel's been online. Me and Evan have been watching each other's videos and uh, actually having a two-way conversation, which is kind of interesting. That was actually a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun thing. Uh, Zero, you need to get on. Uh, you need to get uh, working at nights again, like uh, like I do, and then you can come hang out some more. Anyway, this is what I've been doing. My capacitor bank. I, I did try some uh, discharges. I tried to do some things that I uh, I thought might work, and I had to go back to the old system. So this could be bad. Uh, I've got a lot of a uh, little bit more research to do that I I, th I thought this would work, but might have to do some changes. Nonetheless, there it is. I finally have it this far. Um, yeah, looks pretty freaking sweet. I temporarily have some long leads on it. That's one aught cable. I did go ahead and get a uh, one inch by half inch thick bus bars to put on the front. And I have them basically just coming out the front. And I did uh, I did bend these these angle pieces to come out and bend down. That was about the best way I could figure out how I was going to do this. Um, originally, I was going to take and you see my holes inside there, and I had holes inside of the the bus bars. I was going to actually run like a piece of all thread down through there. You can see how the holes would match up, and uh, you know that all thread would be my bus bar, but that didn't quite work out. I wanted to make it accessible from the outside. So this is how I have it. Um, I do have basically the two banks tied together with a big jumper here in the middle. You can see that's one aught cable as well. I just happened to have these cables. I, I took them out of some fork truck at one point in time and hung on to them. Uh, the same thing with these these long leads here. And uh, this used to be in one of those connectors with the ends on it, the quick connect. Uh, you can see I've been having having a little fun doing some quick lower voltage tests but anyway I'll probably have to put some lugs on that or something when I get to get to that point and I'll have to definitely short the, shorten those things or else I'm going to lose some power um, the, the next thing I'm going to do is put some safeties I have this old heater out of a um, uh, a heater uh, like a furnace for your home it used to be a 120 or may, uh, might have been a 240 volt furnace. Each one of these is somewhere around 11 ohms, and then one of them is around 25 ohms. So what I'm probably going to do is take the 25 ohm coil and connect it to a relay contactor. I've got a 100 amp relay contactor over here. Look at this pile of mess, man. Here is my contactor I will I might not need to need to use this one I have no idea even where this came from I just collect stuff when people give it to me and this may have been a replacement part that wasn't really working correctly but it's working it's a 120 volt I believe so that's perfect because I get a lot of junk sometimes but there anything that's a higher voltage will not let me use it most of the time because it's like 480 volt coils and stuff I hate that so anyway this is a 120 volt coil but it's a 100 amp, 8 kilovolt. Um, basically, that's my ratings. You can see my horsepower. Anyway, I'll be using 350 volts. So, I can drop, uh, drop. basically, what I want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of circuitry on this thing, safety circuitry. And what's going to happen is I'm going to need to have it plugged in to the wall and activated in order for this thing to work. And then when it's not plugged in or if I lose power it will automatically take this contactor turn it off and it will automatically discharge this capacitor bank across this 
coils here. Okay, so that's going to be my circuit. That's going to be my safety. That way nobody gets hurt, including myself. I know you guys are. A lot of you are pretty worried about this. Um, I know what I, I know what I'm playing with here. It can be extremely dangerous. Uh, one wrong move and poof. Uh, so I, I do know that, and I am taking precautions. One of them is setting up a safety circuit so that if anything were to uh, happen or if I want to make sure this thing is dead shorted out, I can do that. So just so you guys know, I am taking my precautions and uh, definitely, definitely safe, not sorry. The other thing I did do is uh, put a, you can see a plastic all the way around, all these sides, back side, front side. I also do have a, 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 some, uh, let me set this down, have this on some casters, oh, there we go, so that I can push it around, I will have to put something on the front yet, I haven't gotten that far, but basically I can wheel it around, do whatever I want, move it around. Yeah, that's what I got for you guys today. Capacitor update. And uh, as soon as I figure out some of my circuit, now that I've um, not, it, it doesn't quite, th the circuit I put together didn't quite work the way I thought it would, so I'm going to have to re rethink it. I was using a flyback um, to try to jump the gap to make the uh, particular gap and allow the voltage to discharge across my leads. Um, I did play with it on the live show today as you can see I uh, got it up to about 100 volts and I did some damage check that out. Those, are, those were brand new when I started. Definitely discharging some uh, some amperage. And actually it was pretty cool. I had these sitting here like this um, and the one nut on this side actually jumped across and attached to this side and then I fired again and it jumped from this side and, and welded itself back to that side. It's hilarious. I did do that on the live show. I just got done. The live camera's up here. It's been watching me and uh, Z talk back and forth. That's been kind of fun. And uh, if you want to watch that live footage, uh, I believe that's youtube.com forward slash RWG Research Live. I believe is what it is. Um, I'll put that link in the description so you can uh, make sure you watch it. Um, I may even attach some of that footage onto the end of this just to go ahead and uh, include some of that so you can see it. But I did have to use my other my other type of circuit which made me made me basically run my high voltage through that transformer and the low voltage through that transformer which I don't want to do. I want to get rid of that. So, there you go. You have now officially seen the capacitor bank. And, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what it's turning out to be. I really want to get some tests done for Jason on these, uh, on these right here. These are magnets. I got them hanging right there. Remind me that's one of the first things I'm going to be doing. Probably the second. First thing I'm going to do is try to shrink some quarters. But we'll see. I really don't know how well this will work. And uh, the reason for that is because of the lower voltages. Um, most of the time when you see people doing things like that, you've got higher voltages. Now, I can't hook these in, in series or parallel. Oh, I wanted to show you this as well. Right here, you can see these are pretty close. Um, I am using 350 volts, and believe it or not, it will not jump that gap. But I went ahead and put two layers of uh, shrink wrap on there. And I'm probably going to put some sort of uh, insulator tape on this edge just to make sure. Now, some of these are a little bit bigger gap. It depends on how everything's sitting in here. Um, these things can move around, as you can see. And uh, when, when you have this much power discharging, um, it's actually probably a good thing that, that your capacitors have a little bit of movement because things tend to flex. <laughs> they go a little crazy. So, anyway... Alright, well that's it. Russ with rwgresearch.com. Hope you've uh, enjoyed my little capacitor bank update video. And more to come. I uh, Hopefully I'll get some more done. Time will tell.
uh, too much going on. Peace and love to you guys. Thank you for your support. Really appreciate all the support out there. Uh, just a little pat on the back every once in a while. That's encouraging for me to keep going. And hopefully we all learn some stuff together. So have a good day. I'll talk to you later. See you.